any difference between the patient acceptance of dharmas which fail to be produced on the part of the disciples and pratayika buddhas on the one side and on the part of the bodhisattva on their other. The Lord. What is the cognition and forsaking of the stream winner? 2. The pratayika buddha, that is part of the patience of the bodhisattva. And this is the difference between the patience of all the disciples and pratayika buddhas and that of the bodhisattvas. That the bodhisattva, who is endowed with this such like patience, surpasses all the disciples and pratayika buddhas. For when he has stood in this patience, in the patient acceptance of dharmas which fail to be produced, he courses in the path of a bodhisattva and fulfills the knowledge of the modes of the path. Through this fulfillment he becomes one who is not lacking in the thirty-seven dharmas which act as wings to enlightenment, and in the concentrations on emptiness, the signless and the wishless. He becomes one who is not lacking in the five super-knowledges, and so he can mature beings and purify the Buddha field. As a result he reaches the knowledge of all modes through the wisdom which is conjoined with one single instant. It is thus that the Bodhisattva, who courses in perfect wisdom, fulfills the markless perfection of patience. Moreover the Bodhisattva, having stood in the five grasping skandhas as like a dream, too, like an apparition, and as without marks, exerts physical and mental vigor. He aspires for enlightenment with his physical vigor in that he travels to the world systems in all the ten directions, honors the Buddhas and lords, and works the wheel of beings. With the help of his physical vigor, he matures beings, exhorts them to the triple vehicle and establishes them therein. It is thus that the Bodhisattva who courses in perfect wisdom fulfills the markless perfection of vigor. With a mental vigor which takes place on the path which is without outflows and which is included in that path he fulfills the perfection of vigor in which all wholesome dharmas are included. When the Bodhisattva courses in them, he should fulfill the knowledge of all modes and by fulfilling that he will forsake all the defilements together with their residues, and in consequence he will fulfill the full complement of the marks, accomplish the state of having a halo all round, and turn the wheel of Dharma, with its twelve aspects and its three revolutions. When he turns it, the great trichleocosm will shake in six ways, and this entire trichleocosm will be irradiated with a sublime splendor and he will induce the beings in that great trichleocosm to listen to those sounds which issue from the Tathagata, and they will all become fixed on the three vehicles. It is thus that a bodhisattva, perfection of vigor does much. When he has stood in the perfection of vigor the bodhisattva should fulfill all the Buddha dharmas and reach the knowledge of all modes. Furthermore the bodhisattva, who courses in perfect wisdom, when he has stood in the five grasping skandhas is like a dream, too as like an apparition, fulfills the perfection of meditation. And how does he do so? Here the Bodhisattva dwells in the four trances, the four unlimited, the four formless attainments, and he develops the concentrations on emptiness, the signless and the wishless, the concentration which is like lightning and the right concentration. When he has stood in the concentration which is like a thunderbolt, then, leaving aside the concentration of a Tathagata, he dwells as one who has entered on whichever concentrations are common to the disciples and Pratayika Buddhas, as well as any other classes of concentrations and meditational achievements, after he has suffused them all with his body. But he does not relish those concentrations, nor the fruit of his meditational attainment. And why? Because he cognizes those concentrations as markless, and as having non-existence for their own being. How can a markless dharma relish a markless dharma? Not relishing them he will not gain a new rebirth through any of these concentrations be it in the world of form or the formless world. And why? Because he does not apprehend those two worlds, nor him who enters on concentration, or whereby he enters on concentration. Not apprehending these he fulfills the markless perfection of meditation, and through that perfection of meditation he transcends the level of the disciples and Pratayika Buddhas. Subhuti. How does the Bodhisattva, who has fulfilled the perfection of meditation, transcend the level of the disciples and Pratayika Buddhas? The Lord. Here the Bodhisattva has been well trained in their various kinds of emptiness but in all these emptinesses no dharma can be apprehended on which he could take his stand, be it the fruit of a stream winner, too. 
the enlightenment of a Pratyeka Buddha, and even the knowledge of all modes that is empty through those emptinesses. When through these emptinesses the Bodhisattva has transcended the level of the disciples and Pratyeka Buddhas, then he enters on the certainty of a Bodhisattva's salvation. Subhuti. What is the Bodhisattva's rawness, armor, and what is his certainty and why armor? The Lord. All the bases of a Bodhisattva are his rawness, all. The baselessness is certainty. Subhuti. What is basis? What is baselessness? The Lord. If form, to the knowledge of all modes is a basis for the Bodhisattva, that is his rawness. The certainty, on the other hand, consists in that those dharmas, I, E, form, to the knowledge of all modes, are not apprehended as a subject of verbal communication. And why? Because the own being of form is incommunicable by words. This is the Bodhisattva's certainty. When he has entered on this certainty, the Bodhisattva fulfills all the concentrations, but he is not reborn as a result of them. How much less could he produce greed, hate or delusion, based on which he would bring about deeds which would make him fall into samsara? It is quite impossible that he should do so. On the contrary, although he has stood in the conviction that dharmas are like a magical illusion, he works the wheel of all beings but he does not apprehend a being or a magical illusion. In spite of that he matures beings and acquires a Buddha field. It is thus that the Bodhisattva, having fulfilled the perfection of meditation, goes on until he turns the wheel of Dharma I. E. The wheel which is baseless and which is emptiness, signless, and wishless. Moreover the Bodhisattva who courses in the perfection of wisdom comprehends all Dharmas as like a dream, too. Like an apparition. The single instantaneous reunion which sees the mark of non-duality in all dharmas. Subhuti. And how does the Bodhisattva do that? The Lord. Here the Bodhisattva, who courses in perfect wisdom, has not seen the dream or the one who sees the dream, too. He has not seen the apparition or the one who sees the apparition. And why? Because a dream is a perverted view on the part of the foolish common people. But Haritz, Pratyeka Buddhas, and Tathagatas do not see a dream or one who sees a dream, too. They do not see an apparition or one who sees an apparition. And why? Because all dharmas have non-existence for their own being, and they are the same as final nirvana, because of their unreality. Not totally real are all dharmas. Because they have not actually come into being. It is quite Impossible that a bodhisattva, who courses in perfect wisdom, should become one who has the notion of an existent, or of something totally real, or of something truly real. That would not be the perfection of wisdom if one were to apprehend the own being of any dharma whatsoever, or its total reality, or its true reality. It is thus that the bodhisattva, who courses in perfect wisdom, does not cling to form, to the five perfections. When he has stood in this perfection of wisdom, he fulfills the ten stages, without producing towards them passionate greed. And why? Because he does not apprehend those stages. How, then, can he produce passionate greed towards them? He courses in the perfection of wisdom, but does not apprehend it. Coursing in the baseless he sees all dharmas as contained in this perfection of wisdom, and yet he does not apprehend those dharmas. And why? Because these dharmas on the one hand and that perfection of wisdom on the other are not two nor divided. And why? Because there is no differentiation between these dharmas. All dharmas are undifferentiated because they have been identified with the dharma element, with suchness and the reality limit. Subhuti. If all dharmas are undifferentiated, how can there be a distinctive definition of dharmas as wholesome or unwholesome, as worldly or supramundane, as with or without outflows, as conditioned or unconditioned? The Lord. What do you think, Subhuti? Is there in that dharmahood of dharmas any conventional utterance about any dharma, be it conditioned or unconditioned, or relating to the fruit of a stream winner, too? To full enlightenment. Subhuti. No, O oh Lord. The Lord. By that method also you should know, Subhuti, that all dharmas are undifferentiated, unmarked, non-produced and unmanifested. 
When I in the past have coursed in the course of a bodhisattva I have not apprehended any dharma whatsoever. It is thus that the bodhisattva courses in perfect wisdom from his first thought of enlightenment onwards up to the time when he awakens to full enlightenment, and that without taking anything as a basis. And he should become one who is skillful about the own being of all dharmas because then he can fulfill the path to enlightenment, mature beings, and acquire a Buddha field. When he has established himself in that Buddha field and has awoken to full enlightenment, he disciplines beings in such a way that they no longer appear in the three inauspicious places of becoming. It is thus that the Bodhisattva should course in the perfection of wisdom, through his devotion to the absence of marks. End chapter 72